your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn to 1 Kings chapter 18. Uh, to kind of lay a foundation this morning, I'm going to kind of go back a little bit to chapter 16, and we're going to talk about a couple of scriptures there, and then a little bit in chapter 17. But uh, the main lesson this morning is going to come from chapter 18. Uh, before we do begin, I want to lay a foundation. And uh, there's going to be four people that we're going to be talking about. And uh, like I said earlier, if I don't finish it uh, this week, uh, then Peggy has allowed me the grace to go ahead on next week. <laughs> so, anyhow, but uh, I don't know how many rabbit trails I may go down but this morning. Uh, but uh, when I was studying this, uh, a lot of things that came to my mind, and the problem with that is, uh, you know, when I get up here to teach it, you know, I can't remember all those things, you know. <laughs> so, so anyhow, this morning, I'm just praying that God's going to bring everything back to my remembrance, Amen. you know, and all. But there's four people we're going to talk about this morning. And uh, one of them's going to be uh, Ahab. Uh, and then the other one's going to be Elijah. Not Elisha, but Elijah. And then uh, one's going to be Jezebel. And one's going to be uh, Obadiah. All right. Uh, all right. So we're going to be talking about these four characters that they're going to be playing mm -hmm a role in our Sunday School lesson today. Amen. And uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Ahab in case you don't know who Ahab is. Uh, I know many of you who have been serving to God for a long time, uh, you know who Ahab is. Ahab was a bad person. Okay? <laughs> he was a very bad king. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, if you go to uh, uh, 1 Kings uh, uh, chapter 16, verse number 29, uh, you'll find out that he ruled for 22 years. The last part of that scripture tells you that he ruled for 22 years. And then if you go down to verse number 30, you know, you'll find also that, uh, uh, that, uh, that Ahab was the son of Omar, and they did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of let you know, uh, this, didn't, this didn't start with Ahab. I mean, Ahab's father, mm -hmm. Ahab's grandfather, mm -hmm. Ahab's Ahab great-grandfather, Ahab's yes. great-great-grandfather, they all were wicked kings. Mm -hmm. So this is a period of time that has gone on for many, many years. Mm -hmm. So, and Israel happens to be caught up in all of this, okay? So they're kind of in bondage to this, to this wickedness and, and these ungodly uh, uh, rulers of these kings and all. So uh, if you just think about that, you know, uh, I know we have our freedom today, mm -hmm. to be able to praise the Lord, to be able to worship God mm -hmm. and everything and all. And sometimes we kind of take that for granted. But just think about if you was in kind of like captivity or bondage, you know, and your ruler over you was a, a very wicked person and, uh, and <clears throat> he didn't serve the same God you serve. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, Ahab, he served the God of Baal. And, uh, and you know, so Ahab, he, uh, he, he marries this uh, lady by the name of Jezebel, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> when you put Jezebel and you put Ahab together, uh -huh. you got what I call a dynamic duo. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, I don't know how many of you know about <coughs> Batman and Robin, but uh, they were always considered a dynamic duo. Right. So this is Batwoman and Robin, I guess you could yeah. say. But, right. But them two, them two together, uh, they were they were they were pretty pr pretty rough. Matter of fact, in in First Kings chapter sixteen, verse number thirty three, I'm gonna tell you how bad they were. It says Ahab did more, Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Now think about that. I mean, all the kings that mm -hmm. came before Ahab, Ahab and Jezebel together. They did more to provoke the Lord than all the kings. That's got to tell you they're pretty wicked. Right. Okay? So uh, just kind of laying that foundation. Then we got Elijah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing about Elijah, he's a prophet of God. He's a major prophet of God. Amen. And uh, whenever Elijah shows up on the scene, you can bet something's going to happen. Right. <laughs> and it, it, we're going to find out a little later on, you know, uh, about some things that Elijah did. Uh, but Elijah was a prophet of God. He loved mm -hmm. the Lord. He was used by God mightily. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he yeah, kind of sets the right scene right. for all these things that have taken place in 16, 17, and 18 of uh, First King here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and then we have Obadiah. Obadiah is the one I really like. Uh, Obadiah, he loved the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, he feared God. But he, Obadiah was the governor of Ahab. Okay. So that means that uh, Obadiah kind of had like the, the say-so, the, say the control, uh, you know, uh, 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 
uh, Ahab uh, uh, trusted him. Okay, mm -hmm. trusted him with everything that he had. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of like Joseph and the Pharaoh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of how uh, uh, Obadiah was. So he was really, really close to Ahab. And you may say, well, if Ahab was such a bad person and Jezebel is such a bad person, and they have assigned uh, Obadiah as being the governor, that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> but I want you to think about that. And it's something that we can use today in everyday life. Mm -hmm. So just say you're working for someone who's uh, uh, ethically a bad person, you know, and uh, I worked for someone like that many, many, many years ago, you know, gambled all the time, alcoholic, uh, cheated people every, every time he got an opportunity to do it, and, uh, and I had to work for this individual. Of course, I was young in the Lord, you know, I hadn't been saved too many years, and I, and I had a zeal for God, loved the Lord, and, and, and I told him one day, I'm not going to call his name out, but I told him one day, I said, don't ever ask me to lie for you. Mm -hmm. right. And he kind of looked at me strangely. I said, mm -hmm. number one, I won't lie for you. Mm -hmm. I said, and number two, you don't want me to lie for you. Right. Because if I lie for you, then one day I may lie against you. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, you know, sometimes we're put in positions, you know, in places to where it may not be the best place. It may not right. be a Christ Christian atmosphere. But sometimes we're put in that position, you know, to be a light. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. To be a light unto the situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like Obadiah was here. And one thing about it, one thing I feel like as I was studying this lesson and some of the scholars and everything and all, uh, they kind of felt like that uh, the reason that uh, Ahab had appointed Obadiah as his governor because Obadiah was faithful to his God. All right. mm -hmm. Okay? So, and he thought that if Obadiah was faithful to his God, then he would be faithful to Ahab. Mm -hmm. Okay? So he trusted him. So mm -hmm. that's something to think about. You know, even in your, in your life today. You know, where, you know, wherever you work or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, in positions you're in. You know, sometimes you may be put in a position because of your stand. Even though you may not agree <clears throat> with your stand. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? And you're thinking, why in the world did God put me here? Right. <laughs> why am I here? You know. And I, but uh, it could very well be, you mm -hmm. know, if you find favor... Right. Because of your walk with God, mm -hmm. you know? and uh, and I have seen that in my life, and I really believe that. I really believe that I have found favor, you know, because of my relationship with God, and all. Uh, because they they have a tendency to trust you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even they might not agree with you, but they have a tendency to trust you. So anyhow, where we're at here is we've got Obadiah, we've got uh, Ahab, we've got Jezebel, and we've got uh, Elijah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just to kind of tell you a little bit, uh, has everyone any, you ever heard anybody say, uh, that person's got the Jezebel spirit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been called Jezebel? <laughs> you don't have to answer that. Right. <laughs> I, I know, guys, you haven't. You know, mm -hmm. but if you're a lady in here, have you ever been called a Jezebel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, think about that. You don't have to answer that. Right. But uh, I, I will tell you this. There was a time and uh, that when in our last church we passed, and I know they don't... Many of them don't watch me, so, <laughs> you know. And the ones who do watch me, they love me enough to watch me, so they wouldn't yeah. be offended by that. But there was this individual, this one individual in church. There was a guy, and uh, he just, he did not like Pam. And I'll just tell you that. And that's my wife back there, Pam, mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know. He did not like her. I mean, he, he would not say it to her face. He wouldn't say it to my face. But word got around that he would, uh, that he would just say, well, she's just a Jezebel. First of all, didn't even know, he took the word out of context. Okay? What? But that's what it was. Because you know why, though? It was because of the way she dressed. Mm -hmm. Because she, she put on a little bit of makeup. She put on a little bit of what jewelry. Katie called bling. Yeah. A little bit of jewelry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, she fixed herself up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he didn't agree with that. Right. You know? You know, she, he, he couldn't, have, couldn't have see the fact that how, you know, her singing and everything and all that and her heart, you know, but just because he didn't agree with the way she dressed, and many of you here sitting today, he would call mm -hmm. you Jezebels. Mm -hmm. I just tell you that. <laughs> yeah. You know, only because of your outward appearance. Yeah. Right. You know, so, uh, matter of fact, when Pam would sing, he would get up and walk out of the church. Mm. Yeah, so can, can you imagine that? He, <laughs> you know, every time she would get up to sing, he would get up and leave the church. So he just, he, he didn't agree with her, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you, even in the world today, we take the word Jezebel and we use it for the wrong reason. 
-hmm. So if you've ever been called that, and I encourage you to go back and study a little bit about mm -hmm. who Jezebel really was, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, so you just, you'll just kind of feel a little bit better about yourself and you say, well, I'm not, I'm not a Jezebel. But, <laughs> 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 so, anyway. but that's, just, that's just to kind of tell you, you know, as to how, you know, the people thought and all. So, mm -hmm. uh, but anyhow, so Jezebel, she wasn't a good person, not at all. Ahab wasn't a good person. They were really bad people. So anyhow, uh, we're going to kind of step a little bit forward here. And uh, the reason we have this is because Elijah was obedient to the Lord. Okay, so we're entering into a time of the where there, there was a famine taking place. Okay, and that's because Elijah was obedient to God. You know, and Elijah went to Ahab, and Ahab, you know, mm -hmm. worshiping all these false gods and doing things he shouldn't be done. So this was kind of a punishment that was put upon them that there was going to be a famine. There was going to be no rain. Wasn't going to be no dew or nothing like that, okay? So all of this is taking place, okay, during this time. All of this is taking place. We're in the famine. Elijah has already, uh, he's, he's done went away, and he's been gone for about three years. The first year, they believe that he, he spent a year there by the brook, mm -hmm. the cherub, cherub, something like that, that he spent a year there. Mm -hmm. And then he spent two years uh, there with the, the, the widow woman at mm -hmm. the Zarephath. Mm -hmm. He spent two years with her, okay? So the Lord has spoken to Elijah. Mm -hmm. He says, Elijah, it's time <coughs> now for you to go and to find Ahab, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing, Ahab has searched all over. I mean, he has searched the country over mm -hmm. trying to find Elijah mm -hmm. ever since that took place, ever since the famine started mm -hmm. to take place. And some scholars believe that it really wasn't to try to kill Elijah, but that was trying to get Elijah to reverse mm -hmm. this famine. Right. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. More than anything, because you got to understand, there was no water hardly. Right. The, the, the crops were just dried up. Uh, the, the animals were all dying. You mm -hmm. know, it was a really, really bad time. So they believed that the main reason that he was trying to find Elijah was to kill him, but mm -hmm. to get Elijah to change the course of the famine that was taking place. And as, right. I, as, I, as I read that, as I studied that, I kind of said, well, that kind of makes a little sense. Mm -hmm. You know, why did you put this on us? Now you get your God right. to reverse this and take it away. But Ahab, but Ahab was never able to find Elijah, okay? So here we are, God has spoken to Elijah. Right. And, Eli and God tells Elijah, uh, let me read here, uh, uh, let me start. Let me go. Let me go to first, uh, chapter eighteen, okay? And uh, before I do that, though, so he spoke to Elijah. And he told Elijah, Elijah, now it's time for you to go find Ahab and all. So Elijah has started his journey. Elijah's got to go to Mount Carmel, right. okay? That's where they're supposed to meet at. And all. Now Ahab doesn't know this. Obadiah doesn't know this. Only people that know this is, uh, <coughs> is uh, Elijah and the Lord, okay? So God again is sending him on a journey, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, he starts out, and then, meantime, let's go to chapter 18. We're going to fast forward to chapter 18. That kind of gives you a, a foundation of what's taking place, okay? So chapter 18, it says, And it came pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. The third year of what? The third year of the famine, okay? The third year of the famine, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. Now, you think about that. This is a person, <laughs> he's telling he tell Elijah, Elijah, I want you to go to Ahab, mm -hmm. okay? Now, you've got to realize, that God, I, I'm the one that's the cause of all this, mm -hmm. right. you know? And you want me to go to Ahab? Right. <laughs> yeah, this man's surely going to, in our mind, in our mind, I would be saying, Lord, this man's surely going to kill me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you want me to go to this man, this man's surely going to kill me, you know? Right. But anyhow, go on to verse number 2. And Elijah went, so he just obedient. Now, in our thinking, we'd be questioning God. But it doesn't say here that Elijah questioned God or not. But it says here, And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. So anyhow, this is where the famine was taking place, and it was in the third year at this time. And verse number 3, And Ahab call, called Obadiah, which was the governor of the house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. So here we are, we got Ahab, and then, now this is two things that's happening here. God has spoken to Elijah, he said, Elijah, you go show yourself to Ahab. And, A, now, and, and God hasn't spoken to Ahab, right. this is just Ahab doing this on his own. He said, Obadiah, 
you know, he mm -hmm. begins to speak to Obadiah, and he says to Obadiah, uh, For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets, in verse number 4, For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a, a hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Mm -hmm. So, during this time that when Jezebel was having all these prophets killed, mm -hmm. Obadiah, remember, he fears the Lord. Right. He loves the Lord. He fears. So Obadiah, somehow or another, he takes a hundred prophets, takes them in fifties, and he puts them in a cave. Though so apparently there had been two, two caves because mm -hmm. he put them up in the fifties. Mm -hmm. So Obadiah, loving the Lord, he takes these prophets, he hides them away. And not only that, but Obadiah will make sure they get water, he makes sure they get food. Right. You know, mm -hmm. He's taking care of these prophets. Right. Okay? Now, everybody's not bad when things are bad. Right. Okay? Okay? Just remember that. You know? So in the midst of everything that's happening here, we can't assume that everybody that was, that was under the reign of Ahab were bad people. Right. They were good people. They were just caught up in bad <clears throat> situations. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, where they couldn't, there was nothing they could do about what was happening, but they loved the Lord. Right. Right. So there were good people who loved the Lord in the midst of a bad time. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just kind of like we are now. We're in the midst of a bad time, not right. anything like what's happening here. Right. But, you know, we're entering into things that are happening. We don't agree with it. Uh, you know, and, and, and if the Lord doesn't tarry, I believe we're going to see even more things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, things that we're going to yes. kind of shake our head at and, 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 and kind of be like, I can't believe this is happening. I know already we kind of feel that way about some things. Mm -hmm. right. To be honest with you, it kind of now doesn't surprise me to hear anything anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? It used to be. It was like, oh, my, I can't believe that. That's just crazy. But now... And now it just doesn't surprise me to hear some of the craziest stuff that's happening out there. <laughs> and it still bottles my mind and it doesn't surprise me. Okay? Mm -hmm. So always remember there's some good people, you know, in bad situation. Uh, <clears throat> and in fact, in verse number five, it says, And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go unto the land, where unto all fountains of water, and to all brooks, free adventure we may find grass to save the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So what Ahab is saying here to Obadiah, Obadiah, we're going to go out, we're going to try to find water, we're going to try to find grass, we're going to mm -hmm. try to find something, you know, to be able to take care of our animals and things, uh, you know, because it's a great famine. So Obadiah and uh, Ahab, they begin to venture out, okay, mm -hmm. to try to find something to help them during this time of famine. Mm -hmm. So they divided the land between them, verse number six, to pass throughout it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. So uh, if you read this, it says that Ahab went by himself, and Obadiah went by himself, and they kind of split up, and they went in different directions, okay? Right. Just to try to see what they could find. And verse number 7, And Obadiah was in the way. Behold, Elijah met him. And it says, He knew him, and fell on his face and said, Art thou that my Lord? Elijah. So here we see Obadiah has, has ran into Elijah. And uh, it's, it's amazing here it's when it says, And Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him and knew him. Mm -hmm. And knew him. So as soon as Obadiah saw Elijah, he's like, I know you. Mm -hmm. I know you. Well, he remembered what, back over three, three years? Three years back? Mm -hmm. Now, he hasn't seen Elijah in three years. But as soon as he sees Elijah, he's kind of like, I know you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're that prophet. Mm -hmm. You're that prophet. Yeah. You know, that was obedient to the Lord. Right? And you're that prophet that has brought all this upon us. Mm -hmm. so, so he recognized him. And he said, Are thou my Lord Elijah? He says, Ask him, Are thou my Lord? Now, understand, he addressed him as being Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? Elijah, a prophet of God, really is not caught up in. And really, any minister is not called up in titles. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, for him to call him Lord is really not what Elijah was looking for. Because in verse number 8, it says, and he answered him, he says, I am go, he says, I am go, tell who? Tell thy Lord. He says, I'm not your Lord, Elijah. Mm -hmm. But you go tell your Lord, mm -hmm. which is Ahab. You go mm -hmm. tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. So what he is doing, he's telling Obadiah, he says, Obadiah, you go back to Ahab and you tell Ahab that Elijah's here. Mm -hmm. That Elijah's here. Now, this is where it really gets interesting. You've got to understand, you know, 
he, ah, he's telling Obadiah, you go back to Ahab, and you tell Ahab, ah, Ahab that Elijah said that he's here. Where is he? He's at Mount Carmel. Mm -hmm. So he's telling them. So, so as, I, as, I, as I was studying this and as I was reading different commentaries and different things about it, you know, uh, Obadiah, he had to be a little fearful. Mm -hmm. Okay? He had to be a little fearful. And, and as we read on here a little bit further, we're going to find out why. And he said, what have, I, what have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab to slay me? In other words, what Obadiah is saying here, you're going to send me back to Ahab, and he's going to slay me. He's going to kill me, you know, Elijah. So, so Obadiah at this point is afraid of his own life. You know, he's afraid of his own life. And in verse number 10 it says, As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when thy said he is not, he's not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found thee not. So in other words, Ahab has searched all over, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Ahab has searched everywhere. So Obadiah is telling Elijah this. Elijah, Ahab has sent, every, he searched everywhere for you. This man has searched everywhere for you. Matter of fact, he just didn't take the word of people who said, no, he's not here, no, I haven't seen him. He made them make an oath. Right. Ahab made the people make an oath. Mm -hmm. You know, if they said, no, we have not seen him. It wasn't just your word. He made them take an oath. Right. That's how, how, how serious this thing was, how much he wanted to find Elijah. So in verse number, uh, verse number 11, And now thou sayest, go tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here? He's got. Like, what are you thinking? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you thinking? You know, this man's gonna kill me. Yeah. He has searched the whole world over for you. Oh, not the whole world, but yeah. the whole land over for you, and hasn't found you. And here I find you, and, and you're gonna send me back to Ahab and tell Ahab to come meet you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this man's gonna kill me. And in a request, and it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee. Because this is what he's saying. This is the reason Obadiah is saying that. Because of verse number 12. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone from thee that the Spirit of the Lord, of the Lord Elijah, mm -hmm. the Spirit of the Lord, the one you answer to, mm -hmm. the one that tells you to do all these things, mm -hmm. the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I know not. In other words, he's going to take you away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm going to go tell Ahab, I found Elijah, uh -huh. and, I'll, and Elijah wants you to come. We're going to come, and Elijah uh, is, going to, is going to tell Ahab that I want you to come. And, and, going to say, and when I get there, Elijah, you're going to be gone. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're going to be gone because your God, your God is going to take you and move you somewhere else. And then Ahab's going to kill me. Right. right. You know, can, can you imagine? Could you put yourself in that position? In that position, you know? I mean, I've been a little scared too. Yeah. You know? First of all, he reverenced Elijah. He called him Lord. Yeah. Second of all, he knew that Elijah had a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. right. You know, and over there, it's kind of like, man, I don't stand anywhere close to God like you do. Right. You know, I've seen how God uses you, mm -hmm. you know? And he says, and here I am. I'm going to go to Ahab, and I'm going to come back. Me and Ahab, we're going to come back, and you're not going to be here. Uh -huh. And that then king's going to kill me right here on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you thinking? Right. You know? So, oh, my goodness. And it says, uh, it says I, I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee. He slay, so he shall slay me. But I am thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. But he's saying, pretty much because I am the servant of the Lord, pretty much saying he's going to yes. obey him. Yes. Okay? Yes. So in verse number 13 it says, Was it not told my Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid a hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave right. and fed them with bread and water? Mm -hmm. And now thou sayest, go tell the Lord, behold, Elijah is here. He's still mm -hmm. battling with this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's still battling with his decision, you know. Man, Elijah, I don't know if I want to do this. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? He's remembering all the things he's done, you know, how he took these prophets, a hundred prophets, and he went and hit them by fifties, you know. Yeah. You know, and, and then you're going, and, and, and this is the reward I'm going to get. <laughs> Ahab's going to kill me. You know? <laughs> it is kind of comical, a little yeah. bit, isn't it? Yeah. Can you just imagine that conversation going on between, huh? 
it's funny if you're not in If you're not in that situation, yeah. isn't it? Can you just just been there and hear this conversation going between them two? Yeah. Um, that's kind of the way it went, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> and you know what? It kind of makes me wonder if somehow Elijah hadn't been in situations where he was transported. Mm-hmm. Right. right. I mean, the scripture, it, Elijah's the one that yeah. went in the chariot of fire. To right. Run. I wonder if there were situations where Elijah had, had been... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Transported before, yeah. and Obadiah somehow had heard that. Right. Or knew yeah. He Obadiah didn't have to convince Elijah that he loved the Lord because he right. hit the prophets. Right. But what Obadiah knew was <laughs> that it was entirely possible that Elijah might not be there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's gonna be like one of those Philip experiences. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one moment you're there, and they go, "God's done transported you." Kind of yeah. like Scotty beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, that, yeah, it is, I mean, I, I would love to have been there and heard that conversation. Yeah, I, I know yeah. we're kind of, you know, yes. kind of have our own little little idea of how that conversation went, but it'd really been interesting to have been there yes. and heard exactly how that conversation was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, and in verse number 15, And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. All right. Otherwise, he is trying to assure Look, mm-hmm. Obadiah, I'm not going nowhere. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to stay. I'm giving you my word. Yes. You know, you just go mm-hmm. tell Ahab I'm here. Everything's going to be okay. Right. So, and, and I think because of the, the relationship that Obadiah knew that Elijah had with God, mm-hmm. you know, and he gave him his word, you know, he probably felt a little bit better. But I was still being a little scared as I was going back. Right. I'd probably be going by my mind, mm-hmm. man, do I really want to do this? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm right. saying, I, I'll, be, I'll be questioning mm-hmm. myself, you know, man, am I fixing to die? Right. You know, <laughs> but I'm going to trust the Lord. Right. I, mean, I, go yes. I don't know what the outcome is, Lord, but I'm trusting you. Right. I mean, that's what it is. Our, 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 it's a faith walk with God, everything we do. Mm-hmm. You know, our lives, even today, is a faith walk with God. Mm-hmm. Sometimes God puts us in sticky situations. Right. You know, yes. and we don't know how to, how to get out of them, but we trust the Lord. We have faith in God yes. that God's going to bring us through. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So Obadiah, he's being faithful here now in verse number uh, 16. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. So here, they got the meeting set up, okay? Mm-hmm. So Ahab has, uh, uh, Obadiah and, uh, and uh, Ahab <coughs> have come together, and he told them the story. He said, so Ahab has said, okay, we're going to go. So they take a journey to Mount Carmel, all right? So in verse number 17, and it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? <laughs> and he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. So here he is. I mean, here is the braveness of Elijah again. I mean, Elijah does not back down. He's right. not backing down. I mean, here he is standing before Ahab. That could kill him. I mean, he's already, you know, put the land, uh, you know, in this uh, famine for over mm-hmm. three years. Right. Uh, the Bible actually says it's a three, three and a half year span that the famine took place. So, mm-hmm. so here we are. He's talking to the king. You know, the king, they were out there trying to find some water and trying to find places to try to survive or their mm-hmm. livestock and all those kind of things and all. And here Elijah just stands up kind of bold. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he begins immediately. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, he doesn't have that. He begins immediately. You know, confront him right. about his worship to Baal. That's it. <laughs> and he answered, uh, no, no, verse number 19. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So here um, Elijah's telling uh, Ahab, you go gather all these people. Right. Go mm-hmm. gather everybody up. Gather them all up, and y'all bring them to Mount Carmel. Okay? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, verse number 20. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? All right. Now, church, we need to take notice of that statement mm-hmm. right there. Right. We need to take that, that, that statement <clears throat> right there is a life changer. Yeah. Amen. It's a life changer. Amen. In other words, he's saying... How long are you going to halt between two opinions? Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve Baal? Right. 
You got to make up your mind. You know, you know what you're going to do. You're going to serve God. or You're not going to serve God. Mm -hmm. And that's really the kind of jits. If you take that one little statement right there and kind of you know just make it simplified. Mm -hmm. You know, he's saying, you know, how long are you going to be with two opinions? Make your mind up. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make your mind up. Either serve God or don't serve God. So anyhow, we'll go a little bit further. And uh, <clears throat> so when Elijah came to all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? If the, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Uh -huh. So just quiet. Not a word. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> kind of heavy here, Elijah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here we got Ahab over here. Mm -hmm. You know, if we say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we kill say, us. the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah. <laughs> yeah. You know, Elijah's going to have us, uh, is uh, Ahab going to have us all killed? Right. You know, what's going to happen here? So everybody got kind of quiet. You know, it, it's a, that's a moment of what you might say where the rubber meets the road. Mm -hmm. A moment of truth, you know. Right here is a moment of decision, a moment mm -hmm. of truth. Then verse number 22, Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Mm -hmm. Let them therefore go up, give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. Okay? That's pretty self-explanatory. Got two bullets, they're sacrificing both. They're going, one's going to be sacrificed. You'll find out here going to be sacrificed to Baal, and one's going to be sacrificed to our God. But there's going to be a major difference here in just a moment. Mm -hmm. And call ye on the name of your God. In other words, Elijah is saying, you know, you, you call on your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. <laughs> See, they, they, they're not really <clears throat> expecting the God of Elijah <clears throat> to answer. Right. Yeah. Now they're expecting their God of Baal right. you know, to answer. Right. Yeah, they're, not, they're, not, they're not looking for, for Elijah's God to answer. Right. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullet for yourself. And dress it first, for you are many. And call on the name of your God, but put no fire under. In other words, you're, 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 you're many. There are many prophets here. Mm -hmm. I'm just one person. Mm -hmm. Here's my idea. He's just one person. Mm -hmm. But there are, are prophets of many, mm -hmm. many people. And they took the bullets which were given them, they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even unto noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. Mm -hmm. No voice nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. Mm -hmm. And they're doing everything they can to get God's attention. Mm -hmm. And this is where it kind of gets common. And, and this, again, this is Elijah. I mean, he's got to be a character. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right? yeah. I mean you got to understand the setting. This is one man, Elijah. Uh -huh. You know, one man, Elijah, mm -hmm. against everything, everybody else out there, mm -hmm. and against Ahab, that could any minute have him killed. Right. You know, and Elijah, right. this is where Elijah really starts showing himself. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and said, it came to pass that Elijah mocked him and mm. said, cry aloud. Right. <laughs> Other words, you're not loud enough. Your God can't hear you. Right. Yeah. You know, cry aloud. For he is a God. Either he is talking. Other words, he's talking. He don't hear you. Right. So you're yeah. just interrupting. <laughs> Interrupt your God. You know, a little bit louder. We can hear you. He can't hear you. He's talking to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Or he is pursuing, or he's on a journey. Mm -hmm. He said, or pre-adventured by, he sleepeth. In other words, your God's asleep. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Cry a little louder. Wake him up. Yeah. <laughs> your God's asleep. Mm -hmm. And he must be awake. In other words, mm -hmm. you need to wake him up. So can mm -hmm. you just imagine? I mean, put yourself in that setting. I mean, um, Elijah is brave. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got to know your relationship you have with God. You've got to know that God has sent you. Here Elijah was, you know, for two years in the comfort of a widow's house. Mm -hmm. You know, for two years just being the comfort and everything and all. And being used by God there because the widow's son dies. Mm -hmm. You know, right. and Elijah brings him back to life. Right. You know, all this is happening during Elijah's time that he stays with his widow, mm -hmm. you know, for two years. 
And so he's in the conference. But, but when the Lord spoke to Elijah, you know, Elijah knew, you know, not only because he heard the voice of God, because what he knew what God had done previously. Right. You know, and if I could just pause here for a moment, you know, we need to use the experiences when God has met, has moved for us, right. you know, right. as a testimony to give us the encouragement and the strength, you know, to believe God for things to come down the road. Right. Okay? And I don't know if I quite got that out the way I wanted to say yes, that, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, reflect back on the time that God has interceded for you, mm -hmm. you know, on times that you call upon him. I know there's been instances in my life, and I know there's instances in probably some of your lives, yes. where you were in situations that seemed just impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, they would just seem like there was no way out. Yes. It seemed like you had not the answer, you know, to this situation and all, and, uh, and you were really in a, in a bad place. But God intervened, and God completely changed that whole situation oh, around. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, there's times that we have to reflect back on those things because, yes. you know, as God moved for us in that time, there's going to be other times down the road. You know, that we're going to get in a situation where we're going to have to continue to trust God. It is a walk every day of faith, mm -hmm. trusting God. You know, we can't serve God just when things are good. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. Because mm -hmm. the life we live today and the world we live today, sometimes things are thrust upon us. Mm -hmm. You know, that we may not have anything, uh, you know, to do with it. We just have to deal with it. Right. So we got to trust God every single day of our life. You know, yeah. so uh, <clears throat> anyhow. And uh, verse number 28. I think that's where I'm at. Yes, verse number 28. And they cried aloud, and they cut themselves after their manner with knives and lashes, till the blood gushed out upon them. So it wasn't enough that they were screaming and hollering mm -hmm. and crying out and dancing and jumping on the altar. You know, they began to cut themselves. Uh -huh. You know, doing everything they could to get the attention of their God. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad today we don't have to do that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. I mean, that, that is so wonderful to know that Amen. our God never sleepeth, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that, that, that we don't have to go through all of these outward things, you know, to try to get his attention. Right. right. You know, all God wants us to do to come to him is with a sincere heart. Right. You know, he's always there to hear us, <clears throat> always there to listen, mm -hmm. you know, he's never too busy, you know, he's never preoccupied. Right. You know, our God knows everything. If He knows the hair that's numbered on our head, mm -hmm. if He knows the 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 the, 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 the uh, pebbles of sand on the seashore, right. if He threw the stars into to space, mm -hmm. you know, and all of those things, you know, how much more does He care and love for us? You know, right. that we don't have to do all these things to get His attention. Right. Amen. Uh, so in verse number twenty nine, and it came to pass when midday was past, and they prophesied unto the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that there was neither voice nor any answer nor any that regarded. In other words, all these things they're doing, all these outward motions, mm -hmm. the, the cutting, the yelling, everything they're trying to do, they cannot get the attention of their God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Cannot get the attention of their God. And Elijah said in all, in verse number 30, And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. So all this is taking place, their God has an answer, and Elijah's kind of saying, okay, it's my turn now. Uh -huh. It's my turn now. Let's see. So verse number 31, <laughs> Elijah took 12 stones, uh -huh. according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. Uh -huh. and, when, and with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and they made a trench about the altars, as great as would contain two measures of seed. So this is a pretty good sized trench. Mm -hmm. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullocks in pieces and laid, and laid him on the wood and said, Fill four barrels with water mm -hmm. and pour it on this burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple things here to, to, to remember. Uh, first of all, we're in a famine. Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> four barrels of water, you know, is it, priceless. Right. right. You know, and here Elijah is say, bring me four barrels of water. And he takes his water, he pours it on the sacrifice, he pours it in the mm -hmm. trench. Uh, every, every, everything he can do. Now, the, the, the others, when they were worshiping their, their, 
trying to get the attention of their God, they didn't do that. Right. You know, but Elijah says, hey, bring this water over here, four barrels of it, let's pour it on here. Otherwise, what he was trying to do, he was trying to, he was trying to, to saturate everything with water. Right. Right. You know when things are saturated with water, they don't burn, oh, it's almost 1050. Right. <laughs> when everything is saturated with water, it don't want to burn. Right. You know? So, uh, so he is just trying to show even how more powerful, you know, because they're not even in fire. You know, there's nothing. You know, here right. he's got this dry sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You've got all this water and everything and all. And, uh, and Elijah is fixing to show them what a true God does. Right. And it's going to be continued next week. Okay. Right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> because we have run out of time. Uh, all right. But I want you, uh, next week we'll finish this up. Yeah. Uh, and I'll get to the, the, the moral of, of what I really want to share with you mm -hmm. with all of this and why I am sharing all this with you and all. But, uh, <coughs> but anyhow, just uh, go home uh, sometime throughout the week, finish the rest of the story. Most of you probably already know it, but finish the rest of the story and we'll pick up next, uh, next Sunday, okay? okay? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity this morning, mm -hmm. Father, to be able to study your word. Uh, and Father, the, the examples that your word gives us, <coughs> Lord, to encourage us each and every day. God, just to show us, Lord, that, mm. uh, that you are the true God, that there's no other God, Lord. Lord, we worship you, the mm. true God. And, Father, knowing, God, that you, uh, Lord, that you see everything, you know everything, you're in control of everything. Mm -hmm. And, Father, if there's one thing that we can remember today, Lord, to have our faith and trust in you, God. Lord, regardless of the situation or circumstances in our life, Father, to know, Lord, that our faith is in you, God. And, Lord, we thank you for that assurance. And we just give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God